Love it or hate it, email is a pretty central point of our lives. Most sites require one to sign up for an account or join a newsletter. It might be your grandmother's favorite form of communication, or it may be how your bank sends you notifications. It's even the preferred way to submit resumes or get paperwork for a job. So regardless of how you feel about it personally, email is pretty necessary these days for 99.9% .9 of people. For this reason, I think it's important that we think about privacy and security when it comes to email. And in this video, I want to share five-ish email services to help protect your inbox. In this video, I want to talk about a different way that you can help support the new oil. You see, we are trying to grow the privacy community. We're not always all about making money here, although for the record, we will never say no to a donation. But if you do not have the means to donate financially, or even if you have, we still encourage you to get involved in the community. The fact of the matter is, I don't know everything. Privacy is a constantly changing field, and it's good to get together with other like-minded people to help encourage you and let you know about upcoming changes in the privacy field. Right now, we have two communities. We have a Reddit community that we are currently trying to grow. While Reddit is not necessarily the worst choice out there for your privacy in terms of big tech companies, we also encourage the use of Matrix, which is more of a Slack or Discord type feel. Matrix is decentralized, and while our rooms are not encrypted, your DMs are. So check them out, join one or both, depending on which one fits your style, and we hope to see you there soon. Let's start off by answering the obvious question, why do you need an encrypted email provider? Mainstream email providers like Gmail and Yahoo can and often do read your emails for marketing purposes. Now, of course, there is not a person going through and individually reading your emails. That would be very inefficient. They have AI that scans for keywords and context. That doesn't mean that employees do not read your emails. They can, and there have actually been multiple instances of people being caught doing this. The most prominent one that comes to my mind is a recent story of a Yahoo system administrator who was opening email accounts and checking inboxes looking for porn. He was basically finding the inboxes of all the female sounding names in the database and checking their emails to see if any of them had ever submitted any nude selfies or anything like that. Even if this is not happening currently at your provider, the fact is that if the employees can access the emails, so can a criminal who gets access to the database. As soon as any one of the hundreds, thousands, or possibly tens of thousands of employees at this company falls for a phishing scam or has their password reused or anything like that, that puts your emails at risk. Maybe you're not sending nudes, but maybe you're getting emails about your account balances or medical test results or pretty much anything that you wouldn't want leaked like that. Using an encrypted provider means that not only can the people who work for the email company not see your emails, neither can any criminals that manage to get lucky and break in. There's a few different pretty good options for encrypted email providers out there, so let's talk about how to pick one. The first question you should always ask yourself is what's their business model? Running an email server is expensive and difficult, and if you do it wrong, then you greatly compromise your security. So that means they must be hiring some people who are fairly knowledgeable. Two of the providers that I'm going to list today run on a freemium model, which means there are free services available, but that's just because they're hoping that you will pay for the premium services. Two of the others do not have any kind of free offering. The next consideration is to get a provider that is used in your friend circle. See, here's the thing with encrypted email. Email can contact anybody. It's what's called interoperable. If you're on Gmail and I'm on ProtonMail, we can still email each other back and forth. But if we want to get the benefit of end-to-end -end encryption, which I have mentioned in another video, then we're both going to have to be using the same provider. There is one caveat to this that I will get to. Generally speaking, if you want your emails to be encrypted not only in your inbox, but also on the way to your friend and back, you're going to want to make sure you're using the same providers. So if everyone in your friend circle is using Tutanota, then you may want to consider doing that. Even if no one in your friend circle is using encrypted email, I still think you should, because at very least, one half of the conversation will be secured. Remember at the beginning, I talked about how the people who work at the company can access your emails. If you're using an encrypted provider, that's at least one company where that is not the case. It cuts your attack surface in half. So again, even if nobody else around you is using encrypted email, I still think you should because it gives you just a little bit more protection. 
Having said that, I do have one very big warning. Email is not secure. This is kind of a point of contention among security folks. A lot of people really obsess over getting an end-to-end -end encrypted provider. The fact of the matter is email can never be secure. It was never designed to be secure. And no matter how much security we pump into it, it will never be. It's just not possible. The reason for this is because right now, all known forms of encryption still do leak some metadata. This could include the subject line, the recipient, the attachment size, or even the date and timestamps, who it's going from and who it's going to. Not everything can be encrypted. Even if someone somehow solves that problem someday, you still have the risk of things like screenshots, forwards, printing out the email, etc. Once you send that email, you have no control over what the recipient does. So again, I think it is really important to have an encrypted email provider because it does offer you a significant amount of protection. However, if you are Edward Snowden leaking state secrets, you should absolutely not use email for that purpose. Never assume the email is actually secure. It can be made better, but it will never be perfectly secure. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about some encrypted email providers. The first one we're gonna talk about is ProtonMail. They are wildly popular in the privacy community. And the fact is, if you go with ProtonMail, you're probably gonna find the most adoption. Most people around you are probably using that one. ProtonMail also has a very strong reputation. They have been around for quite a while and they have a proven track record. They've had multiple situations where they have been subpoenaed for user data and they've had very little to turn over, if anything. ProtonMail has a very clean and modern user interface and is user friendly. On the downside, ProtonMail is probably the most expensive one on this list. They do offer a free tier that's good for most users, and it might serve you just fine. But if you're looking for some more powerful features, they are probably going to be the most expensive one on this list. They also have a very inconsistent user experience. ProtonMail has this philosophy that if a product is ready to be launched, why wait? So this leads to things where, for example, the Proton Calendar app is available on Android, but is not available on iOS. Our next contender is Tutanota. Tutanota is another one of my favorites. They also have a very strong reputation and a proven track record of protecting user data. They are also incredibly inexpensive and have great customer support. Tutanota also has a free tier, but again, if you want some of those more power features, they will offer them at a great price. The drawbacks to Tutanota is that their user interface does leave a little bit to be desired. It looks a little bit outdated, and a lot of their apps tend to be a little bit slower than you might expect. Another personal complaint with Tutanota is that they do not work with PGP, which we will talk about shortly. Now, the next two providers I do not list on my website because they do not have any open source clients, at least as far as I could tell. If I'm wrong, please link to your source in the comments. However, both of these choices are very popular in the privacy community and they are encrypted. And also, I wanted to give you guys a lot of options and freedom. So let's move on to the next two. The first one is mailbox.org. They do not have a free tier. However, their lowest plan starts at a dollar a month, which I think is gonna be pretty good for most people. They also offer a free trial of their email, which I believe is 30 days. So about a year ago, I did actually sign up for mailbox.org to test it out. And unfortunately at the time, I learned that encryption is not enabled by default, which means that if you're going to use the service, you have to make sure you go through the settings and enable encryption at rest. Finally, the user interface is also a little bit dated, so that may not be what some people want out of their provider. Last but not least, Startmail. Startmail is run by the same people behind the search engine Start page. Now, they're kind of a controversial company, to be totally honest with you. I'm not going to tell you how you should feel about them, but if you like Start page, this could be a plus for you. If you dislike Start page, this could be a bit of a negative. One thing the Start page offers that I will give them is really impressive is they offer unlimited aliases, which is something we'll talk about in a soon upcoming video. Start Mail also does not offer free tier, but they are reasonably priced and they have a seven day trial period. Now, last but not least, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. The last email provider I wanna talk about is the one you're currently using with PGP. I do not recommend this but I'm going to tell you why in my next video, because in my next video, I am finally going to do a deep dive into PGP, how it works, what it is, how to use it, etc. I will talk about the pros of it, I will talk about the cons of it, and so forth. So you can stick with Gmail or Yahoo or whoever you're currently using and simply add PGP. However, again, I don't recommend that, and I will tell you why in the next video. So stay tuned for that, please. 
Once again, I want to help support you guys for a change. So instead of asking for money, I'm going to ask you to join our communities. We have Reddit, which is relatively privacy respecting in the sense that you can sign up with a VPN, you can use a burner email address, and as long as you don't download the apps, you should be relatively okay. Just don't post any personal information. However, you can also join Matrix, which is a real-time chat room community that does not require an email to sign up, is both Tor and VPN friendly, decentralized, the whole nine. I highly recommend you get plugged into a privacy community so that you can meet other like-minded people, stay motivated, stay up to date with the latest news, discover other creators and channels, and much more. Although again, just to throw it out there, we will never say no to donations. So if you feel like you wanna support us, feel free. If you want to dive in a little bit more to encrypted email, be sure to check out my website, thenewoil.org. And in the meantime, feel free to let me know in the comments what email providers you like and why you like them. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.